Then the Sheikh mentioned the ibara that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Tarkuhu mala ya'nihi, leaving that which does not concern him. So this is from the righteous manners and the righteous Islam of a person in perfecting their Islam, leaving those things which do not concern them. And the Shaykh mentions leaving off and not giving importance to those things which have no benefit in this life nor in the next. And that this is actually zuhd. This is the meaning of a zuhd, you know, of asceticism. And this is the asceticism which is matloob. This is the asceticism which is required by the sharia. The sharia. <clears throat> and in regards to that, that helps a person beautify his or her Islam. And make their judgments based on the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam instead of making judgments based upon their desires and based on what their own selves require or wish. And he mentioned that this is a from the usul. This is an asl from the usul of adab. This is one of the main pillars of manners. You know, righteous mannerisms. And he said that this hadith, along with four other ahadith which are in Arba'in and Nawawi, all show the importance of the, the best and most important adab that you can practice. And this all comes from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, first, it's this hadith. And then he says, secondly, it's the hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir filukhu khayrin o liyasmut. That whoever believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment, that he should say that which is good or keep silent. And the third hadith is the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said, La yaghdab. He said, do not become angry. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And fourthly, he said, it's the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said, La yu'minu ahadakum hatta yuhibbu li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsi. It's the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said, one of you does not truly believe or does not believe until he loves for his brother what he wants for himself. If we can perfect those, the manners that are encompassed in those four ahadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, just think of the khair you will be on. Just think of the goodness that you will be on if you kept silent and stayed out of the fitna and affairs that happened between the ulama or that happened between Ahl Sunnah. And just think of the khair that you could be on if you didn't speak ill about others and you kept silent and only spoke khair. And think of the good that you would be upon if you kept silent more often. And how you could avoid the slips of the tongue. And how you could avoid saying things that you regret and having to go back and make bayans all over the world on the internet and wherever to clarify and re-clarify and restate the many mistakes that you keep making. And think of the good that you would be upon if you just controlled your anger and didn't react so quickly and so violently when someone accuses you of something, or someone makes a mistake, or you make a mistake, or whatever the case may be. And think of the excellent manners you could be exhibiting, which is from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi 
وسلم, if you loved for your brother what you love for yourself. From the fawaid of this hadith, some of the benefits of this hadith, this hadith shows us first the excellent, perfect deeds that will bring us closer to Allah. This hadith also shows us the, that Islam focuses high, gives high uh, importance to mannerisms, to, to, to righteous manners. And the third benefit is this hadith also distinguishes between righteousness and ugliness or evil. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the importance of seeking knowledge and knowledge of how to practice and implement our Islam. This hadith also shows us that Islam offers you the peace and stability in your life if you practice it, if you choose to really practice and not just pay lip service. Wallahu musta'an. Another benefit of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that the fruits of Islam and the fruits of your iman comes by practice. Tatbiq. That by practicing, it's not simply enough that I'm going to relate a hadith to you but not practice. Or you listen to a hadith and you don't practice. But rather the fruits and the benefits and what's going to cause you less stress and less anxiety in your life and less torment and difficulty that you will face is by practicing your Islam and practicing those excellent moral, that excellent moral character that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent with. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows the importance of the servant busying themselves or busy, busying his or herself with that which is going to bring about benefit in this life and or the next. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the importance of doing righteous deeds in general. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us also the importance of leaving off things that may be mubah, they may be uh, permissible in general, but they really don't have much benefit. They're not going to benefit you in either coming closer to Allah or they have the potential to make you go to disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last benefit I want to mention, Ahabatifillah, is this hadith also shows us that our Iman Yazid Bita'a wa Yunqus bi Masiya. That our Iman it increases with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that it goes down or decreases with disobedience to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala Ali wa sahbihi wa sallam.